views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Art has always been an intricate part of our culture, our soul, and our journey in the black community. The month of October is National Arts and Humanities Month. And on the 25th, it's celebrated as National Art Day. Coming up on this edition of Perspectives, we'll feature one art curator from Brooklyn who's using his experience growing up in Bed-Stuy to enrich and inspire his community through art. That's coming up next on this edition of Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Hyman. What's on your mind? Let him know. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Let him know. Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make your move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, you speak on your decisions. Because in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keep Real with many messages for you to know This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show Entertainment, he rocks it Politics, he locks it The host with the most would handle any topic Don't forget to share your perspective with shines a light Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life Make a difference your perspective Express what's in your heart and your mind Share your perspective what, 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 and hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Jaime. We thank you for watching. As always, you can watch Perspectives here every week on Bronx Nets Channel 67. If you have Verizon Files, that would be Channel 33. Or always, you can catch us on the web at bronxnet.org as we continue to bring you brand new, fresh episodes of Perspectives and people making a difference in our community. We also encourage you to stay connected to us via our social media. And you can do that on Facebook and Twitter. Instagram, my professional page on Facebook, Darren C. Jaime. You can get this and also some other different types of inspiration as well. But on this particular show, I want to talk about, yes, arts. October is National Arts and Humanities Month. It's a time when our country takes a collective recognition of the importance of culture in America. National Art Appreciation Day is October 25th. And here on Perspectives, we're featuring artists who are making, and I should say using their form of art, to keep our rich culture and history alive. And joining me today is the 2015 Brooklyn's Best Honoree, a Brooklyn native and a seasoned entrepreneur, art curator, and owner of Bedford-Stuyvesant's House of Art Gallery, Richard Beaver, and we welcome you now to Respect. It's good to have you on. Thank you for having me, Darren. Glad to have you, man, and uh, good, to, good to have you sharing with us. And so um, you're art curator, and uh, you know, you're doing your thing, and you're doing it in Bed-Stuy. And uh, talk about how long you've been in Bed-Stuy. Um, I established a gallery in 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first opened the gallery, the name was House of Art Gallery. And uh, in 2012, we changed the name to Richard Beaver's Gallery. Mm -hmm. And so for you, obviously, art was, it wasn't always on your radar. But then, yet and still, you've taken it and you've par you know, parlayed this into a huge career now. Yeah. Um, no, growing up, I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I was just a natural-born entrepreneur. Uh, but I was exposed to art at, a, at an early age. My mother would take me to art galleries and museums. You know, so it was instilled in me. And it wasn't until many, many years later that I even considered art, you know, as an option, you know, to do for as an entrepreneur, as, as a business. Mm -hmm. And so for people who don't know about the Richard Beaver's Art Gallery, talk about it. Uh, well, when I first established, I started off selling posters in the street. You know, I would do that on the weekends and sell posters. Uh, and um, it was just a passion that I had for art. But I saw that there was a uh, underrepresentation of uh, art that was reflective of the things that I was seeing on a daily basis in my community uh, that were also art that was addressing some of these social issues. You know, so from selling posters, I started traveling around the country and working with various artists. Uh, after doing that, I made a decision that I would, I would open an art gallery. And I wanted to get open the gallery to provide a platform, you know, for artists of color to be able to exhibit their work. Uh, but more specifically in Bed-Stuy, you know, a place that we would also have access to be able to see the art and we wouldn't always have to leave outside of our community. Yeah, I mean, of all the places you can go, you got a whole lot of places to go, but you opted for Bed-Stuy. A little bit more about why Bed-Stuy. Um, Bed-Stuy is where I call home. You know, my family and I, we lived there. We were, we were fortunate enough to purchase a house uh, about 15 years ago. You know, so being in that community, it was only natural that I would want to bring something that I was so passionate about. You know, that community is so rich in culture, uh, and I just wanted to pay a major part of being part of that revitalization of the community through the arts. Mm -hmm. 
And when we talk about black art, I mean, it's major. I mean, a lot of people are uh, finding more and more out about the artists and the work that they're doing. Um, and you have a particular passion for it. What is it about black art that makes the difference for you? Um, it's our history and our legacy, you know, and I think that I know that we should have that type of representation. Um, and there aren't, there weren't a lot of galleries when I first opened that were providing those opportunities to black artists or artists of color. Um, you know, so my belief was that, you know, let's build it and they will come. Let's have an institution where artists are welcome to come in and express their artistic creativity, creativity openly, you know, without having to feel as if they were being muffled. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's just so rich, the stories, the many different layers. Uh, and I felt that the community was very deserving of that. And who better to do something like that than a person who had passion for the arts? So you have this passion. You said, listen, I'm going to lay this out, um, and I'm going to have this art gallery. What did you want the gallery to consist of? Uh, initially, it was a space for artists to be able to, um, to, be able to exhibit their work. You know? But uh, we also do a lot of community outreach initiatives. Uh, you know, whenever I have an exhibition, I see to it that the artist does a workshop with kids. You know, so I try to really make it very inclusive so that the community feels welcome because a lot of times galleries can um, come across as very intimidating, mm -hmm. you know, and if you don't feel as if you have an understanding of art or if you're not knowledgeable about art or if you can't afford to purchase the art, that you're not welcome into that space. You know, it could really have a very cold um, initial appearance and feel, mm -hmm. you know, so one of the things we do is we don't have a buzzer on the door. You know, I try as much as I can to leave the door open so that it's more welcoming to the community. Uh, we've done numerous fundraisers. You know, we use the arts to be able to raise funds, to be able to pay for kids to go to school for scholarships. Uh, we do toy drives, you know, and we try to be as immersed in the community as possible. Mm -hmm. And when you do things like that, then people are more open, or more inclined to wanting to come into the space. And I particularly use art as a means of communication. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an oratorical communication and then you have a visual communication. So I try to use art um, to be uplifting, to be spiritual, to be positive, you know, so that when you walk into that gallery, you come out of there with a completely different outlook or perspective when it comes to art and the importance of art. I like that word perspective. It's doing real good there. So when you talk about... <laughs> <laughs> got it there. So when you talk about art, right, I mean, obviously a lot of pieces out there, right? And there's a lot of, there's a lot of great artists out there. Who do you like and, 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 and what gravitates to you? Um, there's no particular um, genre of art. So in the gallery, we have photography, we have abstract, we have uh, abstract expressionism, we have realism, um, we have mixed media artists. So I just look for an artist like similar to a singer that just has a very unique and distinctive voice where you can take, um, you can take material or you can take a subject matter or you can take a particular uh, type of creativity and make it your own. You know, so I look for art that's very distinctive, that's very unique. Um, artists are, are vessels, you know, um, and they're able to uh, transfer, you know, the energy and the spirit that they are using to create that work or wherever the inspiration is coming from onto that canvas or into whatever particular work that they're doing. You know, so I look for artists that just have that ability uh, to be able to transform what they're doing and give spirit and soul to it. I want to continue our conversation, and uh, coming up, we're going to talk a little bit more with Richard Beavers, who's got the Richard Beavers Art Gallery, and uh, if you're down in Bed-Stuy, it's definitely worth taking a look, definitely worth traveling to, and get ready to, you know, see what's out there. But listen, we're going to show you uh, a little bit inside the Art Gallery later on. Also going to let you know a little bit about National uh, Art Month, which is, uh, I should say, National Art Day, which is October 25th. Going to open that up and unpack that. What does that really mean? Uh, and so we got a good show here. So stay with us. we got more show coming up right after this. retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. I love it. Cross-referencing travel sites and booking all your flights with those... Vouchers. I got us bumped. They were like, oh, but now they're like... 
Aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. back here talking with Richard Beavers, art curator, and uh, if you want to check out his work, please go to bed -Stuy, check out uh, the gallery and all the great work that he continues to do. When I use the word uh, curator, obviously for uh, many people, that's like, what was that? You know, because when you look at uh, some of the statistics, when it comes to African Americans who are actually curators, those numbers are not much. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. So yeah. what, what what kind of statistics do we see? Like, it's, I mean, it's, it's few. Matter of fact, I do have a statistic here. Let me go. Let me actually do this. When it comes to being, you know, uh, directors, curators, conservatives, educators, whites occupy about eighty four percent, Asians six, blacks four, and Hispanics three. So I do have statistics. Wow. When you say blacks four, mm -hmm. you know, you fit in that four percent margin. What does that mean to you? Um. I think it just means that I have an opportunity to inspire others. Um, and that's one of the aspects that are really important for the gallery is it's about exposure. You know, I have this, um, I have this, this term that I say, if you see it, you believe it. If you believe it, you can achieve it. You know, so when I have young people or even, you know, um, adults that come in and they see that it's possible, you know, what I've been able to do and to be able to not just sustain the gallery, um, but to actually have the gallery grow you know, over the 12 years, um, I just think it's about an example, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, curator for me, curator what it is, is I primarily determine, you know, which artists are going to be represented through the gallery, which works are gonna be in a show, uh, if we do a solo exhibition or a group exhibition. Uh, also determine how the work is gonna be placed and where it's gonna be hung on the wall, you know, from lighting um, and making those types of critical decisions. And uh, the reason I feel that there's such a, a low percentage or small percentage of African Americans that are curators is because it's who is in a position to hire. You right. know, that was one of the main reasons why I said instead of actually going in to other galleries and looking for opportunities, that I would just open my own gallery and create my own opportunities for myself and for others that look like, look like how I do. How do we debunk the myth, the stereotype? Because when it comes to art, black art particularly, and just art in general, some people say, listen, it's just too expensive, can't afford it. How do we, de how do we even debunk that myth? Um, it also comes down to what you value. You know, um, I have clients of mine it's a story that I tell, um, it's a brother named Al. When I first opened the gallery, uh, he came in and he walked around and he looked at some of the work that we had and then he asked me price points. And when I told him the price, you know, he kind of abruptly walked out. You know, he gave this like real you know, look on his face, like he was confused. And years later, he's one of my primary biggest collectors. And he always tells this story that when I gave him the price, he looked at me like I was crazy because he had not been educated. You know, he was accustomed to buying posters and buying posters at a frame, spending a couple hundred dollars, you know, but not having anything on his wall that had the uh, ability to appreciate and value. You know, so when it came down to the educational aspect of it, it may take two, three months, four months, you know, of working with a potential client, you know, to make them, to bring them to the point where they feel comfortable and comfortable in understanding why the work is priced at where it is priced, mm -hmm. opposed to buying a poster and purchasing an original where that's a one of a kind piece and a poster is as many prints as that artist wants to print. Right. 
and that's and that's and that's a big difference because a lot of people get the poster mm -hmm. and they take the print and the frame and and that's it but there's a whole other genre and a, a, another whole way of way of doing things yeah. and um you know one of the things we also find though is people that take artists work right and they take their work without permission they steal it you find out you know your stuff is on social media mm -hmm. why what would you say to people about the importance of of not stealing work and, and allowing the artist to be able to have life and be able to go forward because, you know, the reality is you're helping yourself. You have you have a living that you that you have in this right, mm -hmm. and the artist has a living as well. And and both of you should be afforded the opportunity to make it and not have to be subjected to somebody trying to steal your stuff. Yeah, well, so I I, I approach it from a different perspective from the standpoint that I allow people to come in and take photos, mm -hmm. you know, of the artwork. I allow them to post it on social media. Wow. You know, um, I don't look at that as if it's a licensing or a copyright infringement or anything. Um, now, it's different when you want to take that image and you want to reproduce it and then use it as a means of trying to, you know, create a business for yourself or selling the, the image itself. You know, but for me, um, posting on social media is just, just kind of spreading, you know, um, the art itself and promoting the artist and the gallery. You know, what I'll tend to um, request is that you just tag the gallery and tag the artist so at least people know where it's coming from. Right. And for you, uh, obviously you started early and uh, you had a very pivotal moment in your in your uh, life. At 13, um, you became associated with uh, Loris Crawford. Yeah, Loris from Savico Gallery. Uh, so that all came about, I went on a class trip, we went to the museum, uh, came home from the museum and my mother asked me what did I think about, you know, the artwork or you know, was I inspired or did you know what, what the trip meant to me and I didn't you know I didn't have an appreciation for art at that particular time I was like okay it was just a trip we went to a museum and I saw some art so my mother took it upon herself to take me to Savico Gallery which was owned by uh, two black women mm -hmm. and they were two pioneers uh, it was Lars Crawford was one of the owners and they opened this gallery this was in probably the early 80s and uh, my mother took me to that gallery, and when I walked into the gallery, it was the first time that I had ever seen artwork that was reflective of who I was and was telling my story. And it was an immediate connection. You know, I remember the painting. It was a painting of, uh, of a man, black man, sitting on a brownstone stoop playing a saxophone, and the artist was Leroy Campbell. Mm -hmm. And that was the first piece that ever really spoke to me, because as a young person, I always wanted to play the saxophone. Mm -hmm. You know, so I could see myself in that particular image. and. Uh, that story, so Leroy Campbell actually many years later became a mentor of mine. And um, I worked with him and I also was responsible for running his business. Uh, but that moment with Loris was really important because from that point on, I would frequent that gallery. You know, I would just go by and spend, spend the day there and just spend time around art. So it gave me an opportunity to really cultivate, um, you know, my understanding and appreciation for art. We'll come back to talk a little bit more with Richard Beaver. Close it down with him in a few seconds. Taking a quick break. We'll be right back with more show right after this. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys Did know? you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine.
And we're back here on Perspective. Richard Beavers, our guest here in studio, talking about his art gallery. If you haven't made it to the Richard Beavers Art Gallery, come down to Bed-Stuy and tell me where in Bed-Stuy are you. Uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant, historic Bedford-Stuyvesant, 408 Marcus Garvey Boulevard. That's in Brooklyn if you don't know where Bed-Stuy is, by the way. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. In it's... Brooklyn, New York. All right, so come on through. want to get talk about this real quickly. When we talk about school, right, um, and education, because you, you had an early introduction, right? You talked about 13 and how things really came to play for you at 13. At 13 nowadays for kids, the opportunity for arts, sports, you look at school systems, it's one of the first things that get cut, gets cut out of the budget mm -hmm. is arts and sports. Uh, talk about the, the that, you know, the importance of getting that early formation and having it in schools that maybe people can cultivate a love and an art and like a person like yourself, who's got a career that came out of this. Yeah, I just, for the, for the world of me, I can never understand why um, art has been taken out of the schools. Uh, so that's one of the commitments that we've made through Richard Beaver's Gallery is that we go into the schools. You know, um, Frank Morrison is one of the artists that I represent. He's a picture book illustrator. We had a solo exhibition with him last year, uh, Urban Restoration. Mm -hmm. And when he came in for the show, the two days out of the week, we went into the schools. You know, we went into the schools where these kids are underserved and they don't have a lot of exposure to the arts. So we went into the schools, we did a book reading, uh, we provided art supplies, and then we also, on the weekend of his show, we, uh, we provided art supplies, paint, canvas, and we did a free paint class for 40 kids from Brighter Choice Community School who live in a shelter. Awesome. So it's the exposure. Mm -hmm. And talk about exposure, October 25th, National Art Day, uh, what does that mean for you? Mm -hmm. uh, it just means we celebrate the arts, you know, and we're thankful that we have the opportunity to be able to speak to people and reach people through the arts. And, you know, we have to honor and we have to support our artists and we have to support our institutions, uh, specifically institutions, because if we don't support them, they can't exist. Right. When people come to your art gallery, of course, you're, you're excited to have people in your doors. But when you leave, what do you want them to be able to leave knowing? Um... I want them to know that they belong, you know, that art should be accessible to all people. Uh, it doesn't matter, um, you know, what your, your financial means may be. Uh, you know, art should be shared. Uh, there are individuals that can purchase it, but you have a right to have access and exposure to the gallery just like anyone else does. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want people to feel moved to understand that, you know, the creativity is not just through painting. Creativity is just in how you live your life and how you approach it. Uh, for me, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, you know, here I am, you know, a young black male uh, who didn't graduate from high school. I left school in the ninth grade, and we all have a different path, you know, but it doesn't mean that you can't fulfill your dreams and your goals and your aspirations, and you can't be successful in whatever you set your minds or your goals to be. And you, you're, you're pretty public about it. You overcome, you overcame some real serious challenges, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's not to hide from it. You know, um, my past is a major part of who I am, but it didn't dictate who I was going to be and what I was going to be able to accomplish in my life. Mm -hmm. And so, for somebody who looks at you and says, "Hey, he's an art curator," um, and you got you're doing great work, but I know there's some challenges that are associated with being an art curator. What are some of the challenges that you face right now, even though you've had a great modicum of success? Uh, some of the challenges are just accessibility, you know, access and resources. Um, as you mentioned earlier, with there being 4% of black curators, you know, all throughout the country in some of these institutions, that's what you're dealing with. You know, you're dealing with a ceiling. Um, you know, I'm successful, but I'm successful because of the work that I put into it and owning my own business. But now when I'm applying to a lot of these um, uh, premier contemporary fine art fairs where you're seeing more of a representation of black art, but you're not seeing more of a representation of black dealers and black art gallerists. Mm. So that's a major obstacle is that, you know, you have to submit an application, the application is reviewed, and then you get a, you get a, a, a response that you haven't been accepted. But many of the artists that came through my program that have moved on and, work, and are working with other art, other dealers, other galleries that are white owned, those galleries are now, they're getting access with the same artists that I represented. Wow. You know, so it creates a dilemma for the artist. How long can I stay with this particular gallery, Richard Beaver's gallery, if they don't have the access and they're not given the platform to bring about an international exposure now? So where do you go from here? Uh, I continue to grow. I continue to perfect what I'm doing, uh, build on my programming, 
uh, create more opportunities for black artists. Um, I enjoy what I do. I love it. It's not work for me. Um, and I'm making an impact in my community. You know, I've opened the door and I've inspired a lot of people. Uh, and I'm going to continue to do that. Do you see more than just one gallery? Uh, I don't know. At this point, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, I have a family. I'm married. Uh, my wife and I have five children. We're able to travel, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm, I'm not comfortable, but I'm in a really good space and place. Uh, so one of the things that I've been able to do and what I'm going to continue to do is go out and do more shows, you know. I'll be in um, Miami this year during Art Basel. I'll be exhibiting at the Prism Art Fair, and that's the first week in December. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm going to continue to do things like that. Um, I'm working on an art fund where I can bring in a group of investors, you know, to now look at the next generation of artists, emerging artists that we can identify and we can invest in them so that they can focus on the creative aspect of it and we can continue to support them in their careers. That's awesome. So I want to tell people, if you want to find out more information, you have to visit the Richard Beavers Art Gallery and uh, down in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. Once again, give them the address before we leave. Uh, address is 408 Marcus Garvey Boulevard, Brooklyn, New York. Our Instagram, social media is Richard Beavers Gallery. Our website is www.richardbeaversgallery. And our Twitter page is R Beavers Gallery. Well, good to have you, man. Thank you for having me, Dan. Keep I doing the great work it. and opening doors and pathways for people. And, uh, you know, you're, you're making a difference. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All righty. Richard Beaver is our guest here on Perspectives. Listen, I want you to stay connected. And uh, if you do have the opportunity to check it out, remember, October 25th, National Art Day. And uh, on National Art Day, you know what you can do? You can go down and check them out right there at the Richard Beaver's Art Gallery and see the work that he's got going on and the uh, things that are out there for you. So uh, we're about done with show, but uh, listen, we want you to come back next week. We've got a brand new episode of Perspectives. Uh, until then, we encourage you to keep your heart, mind, and uh, your focus right here on this channel. Share your perspective with somebody else. You just don't know. It might make a difference in somebody else's life. Till next time we meet, take care. God bless. See you soon. Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, you speak on your decisions. Because in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines of Light. Because it might make a difference in someone else's life. Behold! The angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. <laughs>